So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Robert, and I'll, I will talk today about databases. So, uh, yeah. So, why are databases? What, what we're going to get into today is what are databases, how they're structured, uh, how to use them, and what type of databases can we use, right? So, first of all, what is a database? So, a database is just a collection of data. And data is just a, a piece of information. So, now here's the, here's the um, important part. Most of the time when people are talking about databases, they're actually referring to database management systems. And uh, database management system is just sort of a computer software application that facilitates the interaction between the user and the database. Does that make sense to everyone? And, um, and the database transaction is just whenever you have some ways of interacting with your database. For example, if you're saving something in your database, you're writing it to your database. Reading means you're sort of taking some information from your database and just finding out what this information is. Okay? Um, this image is a little bit confusing, but what it's trying to say here is that as a user, you don't actually you don't actually have a direct connection with your database. The database management system is what sort of does the work for you. Okay, and uh, think of all this data flowing into the box. The database management system is sort of like this remote controller that allows you to say open the box and put data inside of the box or take data outside of this box and uh, just sort of. Sort of it, it is like a, in, something in between. Um, yesterday I was talking to uh, Rufayan and another way to, that he mentioned to uh, explain this is like, think of uh, in a hotel, a uh, parking valley, people, the people who kind of take your car into the parking, you don't really care about how the parking lot is, you don't care about where, where your car is parked, the parking lot is kind of like the database, and the people who take care of your car when you come in and come out are like the database management system. Okay. Does that make sense to everyone? All right. So, we want to look at models of database management systems. And there are two models. First, we have the, uh, the uh, relational model right here. Think of the relational model as a bunch of staff Excel sheets and and they're kind of the relational part of it is that they're connected to each other in some ways. You can easily you can have a connection from here to this other guy and a connection from this guy to here. And the connection is is uh, it's not like directly there, but you have some ways of connecting to it, connecting those two different things. We'll we'll get to more details about that later. And these models are for SQL. SQL is this uh, query language used. Is there that is very, very, it has become the standard for relational models. And it's just, that's just simple, the way it is. And um, we have the post-relational, which is also the hybrid model of database management system. This hybrid you, is often referred to as no SQL, but the no SQL stands more for uh, not only SQL. So it's sort of a hybrid between having these Excel sheets and having some sort of fancy, fancy connection. You could have graphs, which has just like, say this is a node, uh, like a data point, and it's connected to another data point, and they're like, you can communicate between those two. Or you could say, you could have an object model where, think of a circle uh, and triangle here, and these are just objects that you're directly saving into your database. Does that make sense to everyone? Right, so. Why do you need to use a database? So from now on, just whenever I say database, think of database management system, okay? One of the reasons you might use a database is reliability. Databases obey this principle called ACID. It's, it's an acronym, and the A in the acronym stands for, uh, for atomicity. What atomicity means is that each database transaction either happen or don't happen. Say, for example, you are saving 100 different things inside of your database through your DVMS. 
when you're saving those things, either all of the 100 things get saved together, or none of them get saved. So that sort of gives you a certainty about what the outcome of your transaction will be. The C in the ACID stands for consistency. Consistency means that if you're having, if you're saving, uh, if you're doing a specific transaction today, and you do that same transaction 10 years from now, the result will be the same. So it doesn't matter when you do it, it's just consistent between the, the, the transactions. The I stands for isolation, and uh, it's, it's sort of a misnomer. It's more about a sequential logic. What that means is if you're saving, say, you have a chain of, you have, you're saving things in a, in a specific order, the way they're going to be saved in your database will happen in that specific order. You're not going to have some random, like, I'm going to save the third thing first and then the first one. It's going to go in, in a specific order. And uh, finally, durability is, uh, it means that when you're saving your data in your database, your data is safe. Once it is saved inside, no matter uh, if a power loss happened or some sort of destruction, your, your database will still have your, your, your data. Okay? So that was reliability. And the second thing is performance. Performance is, means that uh, your database, the people who create those database management systems, they spend years and years just making it efficient for querying and for querying data and making all these transactions. And uh, so it's really fast and optimal the way it's structured. That's why the, the DBMS are. The third thing is flexibility. So DBMS allows you to have some structure in your database, but at the same time, they give you the flexibility to save your data however you want it to be, okay? Finally, we have scalability. Databases are created so that they will handle a lot of data. You could have billions and, and billions of records in your database. You will still be safe because that's what they're made for. All right, so this is just a summary of what I just talked about. And um, now, you're probably wondering, what database management system can I use, right? Well, there's a ton of them. And here I just found, like, I think 10 or 9. When I was looking through this list, there was like, I saw 100, and that was just one of the pages I was looking at. And so you have a lot of options. However, for us, we're going to learn MongoDB. So that will be the topic of the next lecture. And I just included some further reading since the slide will be up. You will be able to look at each of the different things if you're interested. Yeah? So I'll start with uh, the part of the next lecture, and then we'll get another chapter. Is, does anybody have a question? Anything confusing? Hello, it's me again. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to learn about MongoDB. So what is MongoDB? MongoDB is one of the most popular NoSQL databases. If you remember, the NoSQL is like this hybrid model. And uh, why do we want to use MongoDB? Okay, so MongoDB is very efficient when you want to do a lot of writes into your database, and schemas, which I, I will talk about later on today, so don't be confused by the term yet. Uh, schemas are very prone to change, so yes, we'll get into this. And um, for those of you who are familiar with object-oriented languages like Java or, or JavaScript even, uh, MongoDB has a very natural and intuitive mapping to those languages, so it makes it really easy to store data that, come, that are used in these languages. Finally, MongoDB is extremely easy to use compared to everything else. Okay? So now we're going to look at the structure of MongoDB. So first of all, when you get your when you, you're using MongoDB, you, you have access to a MongoDB instance. <coughs> Think of the MongoDB instance as a big storage unit. And um, since this is, this is kind of in the cloud, as they say, uh, your storage unit is basically infinite. 
you could make it as big as you want or as small as you want. Okay? And within your storage unit, you have multiple databases. Each of those databases are like a garage and the storage unit. And there is multiple of them. And uh, the next thing is collections. A collection is just one of the bin in your garage. And uh, the idea of a collection is that you want your collection to contain things that are similar to each other, or things that are, things that, that, that are similar to each other, yeah. Sorry if I said. And uh, inside of your collection, you have documents. Each of those documents are the things that are similar. Even though they're similar, they're, they still have some differences, right? And uh, finally, each document has fields. <laughs> so in this image above, I show you kind of like a higher level of what this means. Uh, this is one of the document, and one of the fields in the document is the title, which is the thing about, I, I don't actually know what this language is, so I don't know what to say. Uh, the title is one of the fields, paragraph is another field, and conclusion, and you have signature at the bottom. And if you notice, each field has a value. That's the whatever it actually is. So all your documents, all the fields in your document have values. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah? All right. So this is, I wanted to show again, kind of the bigger picture of what it looks like. You have this big MongoDB instance. And within your MongoDB instance, you have multiple databases. You can add a database. You can remove the database. But you, you just have like a ton of it. And, um, and uh, here, I wanted to show another. Oh. All right, so um, this we're just looking at a collection. So that that whole array of things is the collection, and this is what it will actually more look like in when you're actually working with MongoDB. That is a collection. In your collection, you have multiple documents. And in your document, you have fields. And those fields have values. So for example, the name is Robert, age is 12. Uh, Rupayan is 13. And our boy, Ashish, is it's kind of old. <laughs> yeah, so this is sort of what you would see in your MongoDB collection. Right, so now you're probably wondering, this is all cool, but how do I actually use it? So to use MongoDB, what time is it? All right. So yeah, just are you done with your intro, or what point did you left? Almost. Okay. Yeah. So to use MongoDB, we use MLab. MLab is a database service for MongoDB, and MLab allows you. It gives you access to a MongoDB instance. It allows you to connect your server to your database, to your MongoDB database. Okay, and also MLab is free, so you uh, you can sign up for it. All right. So now we'll just have a mini workshop where we sign up for MLab. So enter this link. If you haven't, just put a thumbs up. It's it's very simple. You have to. This signing up is giving you access to a MongoDB instance, so make sure that that is your instance. Make sure to remember your password. All right. Password. 
You can also hover over that little bubble. And uh, the last thing is you have to actually go to your email and confirm before you're able to, to use it. So make sure you do that. two databases that I created in my MongoDB instance. And uh, I'll just kind of, yes, let's zoom in. OK? Uh, I, when you click on your database, assuming you had this for kind of a long time, you see the thing on top? Uh, where is it? That, where it says to connect to, to Mongo Shell or whatever, ignore that box for now. We'll get into this. Um, if you scroll here, you have collection. And remember when I was talking about collections? These are your collection within your database. So add a collection of images, notification, requests, travel notices, blah, blah, blah. And uh, if I go into one of the collection, I'm able to see my documents inside of this collection. These are my documents. There is uh, 16 of them. And I could do this. Okay, there we go. So that's the full document, and uh, it has a bunch of things <coughs> in it. And uh, you could actually add a document yourself, manually add your document. But most of the time, we don't want to do this. We'll, uh, we'll get into how to add document in your code later. So if you click on add a document, you could actually create a document yourself. Like I could say, name is. Age is uh, 12. And I could create and go back. And it's right there. So one thing you notice is this thing here. Every time you create a document in MongoDB, it, with MLab or any, even Mongo, you get that document automatically gets a unique ID. That is what this object is. This ID, uh, we could check through every, every other ID, but the ID is unique for that specific document. Okay? Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is what I just went through. So now, we're going to do it together. We're going to create our cat book database. So you are probably in the home screen here. So go and create new. Is everyone able to follow? Raise your hand if you're not um, like, lost somewhere else, or are you, uh, are you all at the page on the yeah. If you're going to create new, you, get, you can choose a cloud provider. Choose whichever you want. If you don't like Microsoft, just don't choose Microsoft. And, and you go on a, the plant type, make sure to choose Sandbox. If you choose any of these other ones, they will ask you to give a credit card account, and you don't want to have to pay for anything. We want to do the free stuff. <laughs> so choose Sandbox, and once you're done with this, click on Continue. And then some of you might have multiple regions, and here uh, Google only has one. For those of you who have multiple regions, choose whichever one is closest to where we are. The idea is that if you're making or if you're kind of asking your database something, your request is to travel all the way to your database and then come back to you. So the further it is, the longer it takes. 
if that makes sense. So we want to make our devis, we want to have it as close as possible. And uh, click on continue. Finally, you have to name your database. Uh, just for consistency, make sure uh, make sure to put, to have your name as catbook db so that everyone has is on the same page, same database. And uh, once you have that, you click on continue, and you have an order confirmation. You're actually ordering something, but it's free, so uh, yeah, you just click on submit order. Wait a little bit. And it brings you back to your home screen and it says progress. If you wait a little bit more, then you have that green check mark, which means your database is ready and running. Yes? Um, it says that the catbook DB is not available. It's like try to figure it out. The catbook DB, what? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, the, if catbook DB is not available, I don't know what it would be. Um, That's interesting. <laughs> Yeah, we normally shouldn't, right? It should, it's unique to you. Yeah. <laughs> Has some people gotten a capital DB on their database? Okay. Who hasn't? Can you try it again? You know how many other databases that you put it on your account? Try it one more time. And just okay. Okay. If it doesn't work, then you, and you want to try something unique, do like capital DB underscore your first name, or underscore your last name. Yeah. And we'll work. If you're ready, just put a thumbs up. <coughs> Looks like a lot of people are ready. Okay, so now <laughs> click on your cat book DB. By the way, now you already have your cat book database. Uh, yo, uh, really quick. So it seems like it doesn't work on AWS, but it will work on Google. So if you click AWS, is that accurate for Google? Uh, they want to move. He changed it and it worked. Um, I just want to try, try it again, picking another provider. Uh, let's move on. If, again, if it doesn't work, just make it underscore you. Okay. Is everyone on? When you're done, click on your catbook DB and then you will get a screen that looks like this. Okay, so uh, now we're back to this box here. Um, So you get this box here. This is a different database, but just it, it's kind of it's the same thing. So you get this box here on top, where you have your MongoDB URI, and uh, let's just ignore this thing on top here. Just ignore that. Just have this thing in the red. This is your MongoDB URI. Okay. What is your URI? Your URI is is sort of an address within the realm of the internet. It's, it's a unique address specific to your database that you just created. And it's specific to, uh, uh, let's see. So, as you see here, this you have your storage unit address, that's kind of what this is. Inside of your storage unit address, you get your, uh, your storage name. In here for you, it should be something, it can be catbookdb slash your name or something. And here you have your credentials. So you're probably wondering where do you get those credentials? And to get your credential, you need to create a user and a DB password, which is what we're going to do right now. Right? So you probably have a screen that says a database, a connection is required to, a user is required to connect to the database. So click on users right here. And click on Add Database User. It asks you for three things. Your database username, your database password, and your database password. So just make sure to remember your password. Uh, I'll put my username as uh, Robert V. And my password is QuerT123. QuerT123. A really quick note on this. Don't make it like your actual password because you're going to be typing this later into yeah. a file so like, people can see that. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't need to be super secure. It, yeah. Secure. You could make it like one, two, three, four. I think it should work. 
And there's a thing that says make read only. You don't want to check that box. Read only just means that you'll be able to see the things that are in the database, but you won't be able to modify anything or add anything. So once you're done with that, click on create. And uh, if you get this thing, just say no, because that's not your actual password. Finally, you have a user, your user will appear here. But here's the thing, you won't see your, your MongoDB won't tell you the user's password. Okay? And uh, once you have a user, then you should be all good. So now, when it's asking you to put this URI, for user, you will place that name of the user, which for me will be Robert V, and the password will be whatever password you chose. Okay? That's what we just did. So now we're about to get lunch. And just before we get to lunch, does anybody have a question? Was anything confusing? Uh, yes? Mlab.com. Are you asking what the M stands for? No,